Well, through the years, doctors have tried to understand what they're doing in surgery before they even start the operation. And over time, we added x-ray and then CT and MRI images to help us localize things and make our plans. Over the last decade, we've developed wonderful techniques where all of this image is made into three-dimensional models, just like going to the movie and putting on your 3D glasses. Image-guided navigation works by using detectors in the operating room that are set up around the room and can see where each tool that we'll use is on the operating table or near the patient. Uh, we start by using registration, little pasties that are put all over the body or other types of markers. And when your x-ray is taken, those are seen on that x-ray. These tools are then touched on that while we're in the operating room. And these detectors can triangulate where that is in relationship to the patient and then marries the images that we see on the computer module to what we're actually seeing in the operating room. Image-guided surgery makes things safer for a patient because it allows us to see things that we can't see from the surface. When you're doing brain surgery, inches matter very much. If a part of the brain is damaged that we don't want damaged, people can be left paralyzed or have speech difficulty or have trouble feeling things on one side of their body or the other. So that's very important. When we use this technology, we can actually pick the pathway that we're going to get to the tumor or the pathology of any type uh, that is safest for the patient. That minimizes those chances of those bad things happening to somebody. If you're doing sinus surgery, the sinuses are very close to the cranial vault. So if you would puncture through the back of a sinus, that could cause some complications we want to avoid. And so doing sinus surgery with this type of technology makes that much safer, as well as allowing the doctor to get a better visualization of what the sinus looks like and the internal workings of the sinus even before they start. In the spine, the spine has areas that are very complex in three-dimensional space. And when there's trauma that causes alterations in how stable the spine holds you together, or there's been a fracture from an accident, it's really important that we can put small or large screws into the spine in very delicate areas that will help hold your spine together until you can heal correctly. And so we need some image uh, guidance technology to make that very precise placement of the screw in those difficult parts of your body. Before we had this technology, of course doctors had x-rays, and you then put that into this computer as you're working uh, in your field, whether through an operating microscope or using jeweler's loops that magnify the area. But you have to remember a lot of things we do, we're working down little tiny passages and we're working at depths, say this far, into the skull or the base of the skull. And uh, when you're working and you're seeing something because of the pathology, the anatomy is so disturbed, it's great to have this technology to give you immediate feedback so you can look and see this is where I'm at in relationship to where I thought I was. And again, that makes our jobs easier and more effective. Surgery is a really scary thing for all of us. And if you think about it, here's somebody that's trying to heal you and make you feel better, and we do something very destructive. We take a scalpel, we cut your skin, we plow through the subcutaneous tissue, which is soft tissue fat. We sometimes have to cut muscles, and all this stuff hurts. You can also understand that if you had a smaller incision, you'd probably have less post-operative pain, you'd heal quicker, you'd have less chance of getting infection, and the time of surgery would be cut down uh, if you can have a smaller incision. And that's the technique and the goal of image-guided surgery. This shortens the time of length of stay in the hospital, and it uh, shortens the amount of time that you're going to have pain after that incision is made. As a surgeon old enough to see the generations of images that have come along, I started in medical school with uh, plain x-rays. We then got CAT scans, which allowed us to see inside the body for the first time before we did surgeries. And that technology with computers has gotten faster and faster. And I can't imagine doing surgery today, certainly in the brain and the spine, without having some type of image-guided machine that will help me guide and get the best job done for the patient that I can. It's a real important tool that we have now. And as I said, as a surgeon, I really like to have confidence as I'm operating that what I'm trying to do for somebody is actually gonna happen. That's very reassuring, not only to the patient, but to me.